Hi, I'm Steve Casely from CBT Nuggets, and this micro nugget is focused on Project Charter. The Project Charter, in my humble opinion, is one of the most misunderstood documents in a project management lifecycle, and project charters are often not even created, although the Project Charter forms the foundation, forms, forms the initial approval process to get our projects started on the right foot. So let's dig in and see what a project charter really is. And the reason I believe the project charter is such a key document to successful project delivery, to me, it formally authorizes the project. Without a project charter in place, we may get projects authorized, but what are they authorized based on? They're authorized based on a napkin, or they're authorized based on a conversation, or they're often authorized based on a vision and a discussion between the project manager and the sponsor. And in my humble opinion, all of those project approvals are too ambiguous and too loosely defined. We need a project charter, and a project charter doesn't need to be big, if a project charter expands beyond 10 pages, and I'm not saying a project charter needs to be 10 pages, but if a project charter expands beyond 10 pages, it's probably not a project charter. It's now a project requirements document. The key in a project charter, it defines the needs at a high level. It sets the foundation for what it is we, the project manager, needs to deliver. It manages and defines the expectations of the stakeholder. How much do they think they need to or want to or are willing to spend on this particular project to satisfy these needs? And how long do they have to get those needs satisfied? So with the needs at a high level defined and their expectations defined, we now know what it is that we need to do. And in my humble opinion, we got that already when we defined that the project is, char is formal, the project charter needs to be signed off. We document the needs, we document the expectations, we put it in paper, and we present it back to the stakeholder, and we ask the stakeholder to sign off, say, here, if I deliver all of this, a lot more detail required, but if I deliver all of this, have I satisfied your needs? We get it signed off, we get their approval, yes. And to provide a little more definition of what I believe the project charter should contain, it needs to start with the stakeholders' needs. It needs to define what it is, the purpose and description. I, the stakeholder, want Steve Casely to go forward and produce a project that's going to do X for me. So it's the purpose and the description, high level. We don't have the details. The project hasn't been started yet. What are the objectives? Here's what I want to solve. Here's my problem. And key is here is the success criteria. Here's how I am going to measure. And I, in this case, being the stakeholder, here's how I, the stakeholder, am going to measure Steve's compliance to meeting my objectives and satisfying the project's needs. Maybe we need to provide a little more definition in terms of the requirements. We need to identify the risks. What can go wrong? What are the bumps in the night that Steve needs to be concerned about to ensure this project is a success? And we need to understand what their high level expectation is. It needs to be done in six months. And if it costs me more than $50,000, it's not gonna satisfy my cost benefit justification and the project doesn't make any sense to, to continue. With this level of definition, and again, no more than 10 pages, hopefully less, we present it, we get it approved. And following that basic definition or outline of what a project charter is, I'm suggesting we need to produce a formal document. Here I am in a word template that I often use for my project charter, saying this is a project charter for this specific project, give the project a name. You probably want to make it a little more visually presentation than this. Some company logos, maybe a, a, a diagram to represent the business unit or the project focus and make it a formal document. Give it some degree of permanency. Here's the date. Here's who authored it. And consistent with the format we just reviewed, the project charter should present 
all of the information that I just described should be contained in a well-defined project charter. I take some liberties here in my template. I produced it in a format that I believe is more appropriate to the business unit that I'm going to present it to, but the same basic definition, the base, same basic information is there. We have an executive summary. We identify who the project sponsor is and who the key stakeholders are. We present the business case. The business case is where the requirements, the description is produced. We define the objectives and the success criteria. We present the high level schedule. We present the high level cost and benefit analysis. We do any risk assessment and we have the assumptions and constraints. We formalize this document, we present it, we get it approved. And now we have that formal authority. We have that foundational document on which our project can be successfully initiated. This concludes our micro nugget on the project charter. I hope this has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.